God is globally minded. The, the fact that there are so many cultures in the world and, and they're also dynamic as well too, but God has a heart for every single person on the planet. And uh, you know, one human person cannot understand all of those things and the complexities of that, but God can. He wants the gospel to be shared and that's our, our role. And in order to be able to do that, we've got to understand a little bit more about the person who hasn't heard the good news or who might need to be discipled in that. Well, I'm really happy to have as a guest on ODBU Conversations, Dr. Brent Burdick, who is a friend and a colleague in ministry and uh, now has been working with us on one course at ODBU, but it's actually part of something quite big that Brent's been doing with the Luzon Global Classroom. So Brent, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to be a theological educator and someone working uh, in the Luzon Global Classroom? Tell us what that is too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my wife and I served for 20 years in the Philippines as uh, missionaries doing church planting and leadership training and worked at a Bible college and was pastor of a church. And then we equipped Filipino leaders and put them in those, those roles. And then we came back to the U.S. about uh, 13 years ago as our kids started transitioning into their adult lives here and felt the Lord lead us into new areas. And so I got connected when we got to Charlotte with the uh, Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary and became an adjunct professor of missions there. And then uh, also through Gordon Conwell got connected into uh, Leighton Ford, met, met Leighton Ford, and he invited me to become a part of the global classroom or the Lausanne movement. And uh, in the Lausanne movement, they wanted me to do uh, the global classroom which is um, an introduction to the global church about issues that are impacting the global evangelization, whether positively or negatively. And so as a church is aware of these kinds of issues that the Lausanne network brings, the, the Lausanne uh, movement brings networks and people around to, to talk about those issues, to theologize, to uh, compare notes on what's happening in those issues that are impacting the global church. And so that's what the global classroom does is we produce a video episode uh, where we interview people in those issues about what's happening and why this issue is important to the global church and uh, how we can best uh, introduce them to get churches engaged and being aware of this issue that's that's really so important in this day and age for, for global evangelization. Yeah, so Brent, I just got an email today, uh, another update from the Luzon Global Classroom about a course in church planting, for example. And you have, it looks like probably 10 different people from around the world that you interviewed that uh, and these are freely available on YouTube and other other sites and sources, but these are these are all interviews, right? And they have multiple people in several of these courses, right? Right. Yeah. So whenever we film an episode, we'll go to a conference of that issue network somewhere in the world, wherever they're having it, and we'll ask the network catalyst to identify maybe fifteen or twenty people that are able to speak passionately about that issue. And so we'll sit down with them and interview each one of them. And then we'll put together an outline and interview questions and then go back and edit it. So then we have a, a an episode that we can put together to introduce that. It's been a great joy to be able to talk to people all over the world who are just so passionate and so engaged and seeing what God's doing through them in that particular issue. And so church planning, that was kind of a neat one because we went to Columbia and uh, interviewed about 15 or 20 people there in church planting, and they were all speaking Spanish. And mm -hmm. that was the first episode that we did was totally in Spanish, and then we translated it back into English, with the English and Spanish versions released simultaneously. And That's we're doing funny. other languages as well now, too, mm -hmm. for all the other episodes that are up. So how many different issues have been identified uh, in the Luzon movement as kind of global church issues? Well, they have about 35 different networks, so mm -hmm. thus 35 different issues, and they range from anything like uh, creation to mental health and trauma, to church planting, to media and technology. I mean, there's a numbers of different issues that are up that uh, the Lausanne Movement forms networks around. Well, that's great. We'll provide links um, in the video uh, to make sure that people are able to check this out. Lausanne, uh, the Lausanne Movement is the preferred way of uh, when people talk about Luzon, they're talking about something which uh, did have a, a, an international meeting in Luzon, Switzerland. But it meets maybe every 10, 15 years, and we're getting ready for one actually in September uh, 2024, right? This year, you and I will be there and we'll be able to share about the course that you did with ODBU, the video interviews that you do, how do they become the base for a course? Because 
we're we're hoping that a lot of people will be interested in this course and that we might do more. Yeah. So when I do the interviews, it's with the experts. So these are people who are um, teaching the issue in different uh, colleges, universities, seminaries around the world. These are people who are in practice. They're they're actually living out. They're working in that ministry area. And so they're familiar with all the content. They're familiar with all the issues. And so when I interview them, it's kind of like I learn about, it's like a school course for me. Yeah. And I learn about that. And I take that and I put that down into a, the global classroom. And so being able to interact with those people, I learn a lot. And I want to be able to then share that with other people in the global classroom. And that's really been exciting to see. So I'm not the expert, but I kind of take the content and put it in a form that other people can understand and other people can interact with and engage. And uh, that's really been neat to see um, how people have responded to that. So there's about 35 issue networks and you've been able to interview people in those networks and to create the Luzon Global Classroom interview videos. But between that and the ODBU course, there's something else that you've put together. Can you tell us about that? Well, we have um, what's called um, a, a user guide that that takes um, uh, the content and then we break it down and we bring resources to bear. We introduce people to that in a written form. And also we have like small group uh, guides that people can use to ask questions after they watch the video. We have uh, a full bibliography and uh, it can really be fully adaptable to any context that anybody wants to do it in, whether it's in like a, a church group or um, like a mission agency leadership team, or it could also be something like uh, in a seminary or college classroom. We also have those, uh, we wrote up um, theological syllabuses for those academic syllabuses for either a, a unit within a missions type course or as a uh, full semester uh, directed study type course. And then you also wrote a book. How does the book relate to these issues? Yeah, I wrote a book. Well, um, so as I was going through, you know, doing all these interviews and producing the Global Classroom, I began to realize, you know, this is uh, the Global Classroom is great, want to do that. But, you know, to put it in book form and to bring all these issues together kind of as like a handbook for these gospel issues for the global church. That's the title of the book um, that I wrote. And so I just basically uh, started with eight of the issues and wrote a chapter on each issue uh, to introduce them and uh, kind of wrote it from my own perspective and my own experience and uh, with that particular issue. So for instance, on uh, the arts, I shared about my experience as a music major in college and how music can really impact people and inspire people and, uh, and how that impacts should it be able to impact worship? And it's much more than that, obviously, and much more complex. But from my personal experience, I share that. And so I just realized that I was doing this. I'm I'm kind of about the only person in the world who could write a book like this because, you know, I don't know that anybody else has had a, an opportunity like the Lord has presented to me to be able to bring all these issues together and put them on paper and uh, share them with the, the world uh, in a way that people can interact with them and then do something about it um, for their church or in their context. Well, Brent, we have an ODBU. We find uh, that there are a lot of topics where people have access to videos online and they also have access to books. But a lot of times ODBU uh, presents a platform where we can bundle things together in a learning journey. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the course that you have built uh, with us at ODBU, the subject matter, and how that relates to your book and to the Luzon Global Classroom. Yeah, so the the issue that we started with um, for the ODBU was the mental health and trauma. And uh, so mental health and trauma is a real important issue. You hear about it a lot in the news today. People have breakdowns in their mental health, and they do certain things. Well, in ministry, people have challenges with mental health and emotions and their struggles, missionaries and pastors, you know, they're, they're not immune to some of the challenges that are out there in mental health. And so this episode looks at mental health and trauma and how we can strengthen each other and how we can support one another, um, kind of the, the signposts of what's happening and how to know when we're going through some mental health issues. And then the impact of trauma, that's another whole big issue that you know, we, we are impacted by traumas in our life, whether it's a, a terrible accident or whether it's uh, abuse or whatever the case may be. And so 
um, as I interviewed people who were experts, you know, these are guys who have PhDs and, and, and ladies who have, you know, are nurses or teaching at psychiatric hospitals or things like that. It, it would just really open my eyes to a lot of things. And so as I was putting down the, the global classroom and, and all that, it, it really became a, a key issue that the world needs to address and the church needs to be aware of, especially, you know, for their pastors and for their leaders and things. And so it was really a, just a, a great experience and a great opportunity to learn so much about that. So when I was doing the global classroom, I just said, hey, this has got to happen. And so I wanted to include that in my book. And that was one of the episodes that I did put into the book, a, a chapter on mental health and trauma. And then as we connected together and uh, ODBU found out about it, um, asked me to do that, the first one on mental health and trauma, I think because of the importance of that in, in ministry today, and we hope that that'll expand into other possibilities and things in the future. But uh, mental health and trauma is such a key, key issue mm -hmm. for ministry workers today. Can you just uh, let us know um, if if someone does take the ODBU course in mental health and trauma, they'll they'll see links to the Luzon Global Classroom and to your book. Will they actually have access to the videos and to uh, excerpts from your book? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's all part of the curriculum that the ODBU uh, built. Um, it's actually, you know, you got the, the the Lausanne Global Classroom, which is just an introduction, and you can do the user guide and things like that. But the ODBU course is much more in-depth, and it's, it's much more uh, resourced and nuanced, and a lot more interaction and a lot more guided study and a lot more guided uh um, activities that are really great learning activities. I was so impressed with the ODBU staff that helped build the course um, as we did that. It was really excellent. So I think it's it takes it a step beyond the global classroom mm -hmm. and really allows a person to get go down deep levels into the, 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 the topic issue. So I'd like to just uh, bring this to a close by asking you about your what your what your vision is and what your objectives are for an ODBU student? What would you like them to walk away with from this course? And if we were able to build more and they were able to engage more fully and as you say, more deeply on the on these 35 global issues, what are you hoping they become? Well, um, on several levels, um, uh, the probably the most surface level is, you know, what a person who might take an ODBU course would be to how to engage their church in that and help how to help people in their church become aware of that. And uh, what they were, they as a church, their their community, their Christian community is going to do about that. And so all those resources are there, those questions that they might want to ask their leaders in their church, you know, that would be the first level. Um, the second level, I think, would be was what what does that person who takes that course, do they want to go further in that? Is this something that, that that God might be calling them to get engaged with on a higher level, like like maybe take a, a course, uh, go in college or seminary about that, or go maybe they're feeling calling into ministry in that ministry area, and so that would probably be another thing. Is this a, it would be an introduction to them to say, hey, this is something that God might be calling you to do, and this ODBU course can be the doorway for you into that in a deeper level of ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe being aware of what, how, if you, if that's maybe not where God's calling you, maybe there are other people that you know in your church that you can introduce to the ODBU course, and it might be for them the way to get involved in that ministry effect as well. Yeah. Well, Brent, um, a lot of people probably that are taking our courses are, are Christians. Uh, many of them are in North America, but we have students that are dispersed around the world, really. Um Many of them might identify themselves as Christians by their denomination. So they're Baptist, they're Pentecostal, they're Methodist. They might also think of themselves as being part of their national church. So they might say, I'm, you know, an American Christian. And so people will be interested in those things that affect the church in America. You're obviously a, a global Christian. You're you're a person who has spent a lot of times out a lot of time outside your own home culture. But you're not just a kind of bicultural you know, missionary. You've actually been working around the whole global church. And you're part of a movement, the Luzon movement, which has made it a, a goal for Christians to see themselves as members of the global church. And I wonder if you could help bring this to a close by some reflections on why that's important. Why does it matter that we're globally minded Christians? 
Well, because God is globally minded. <laughs> you know, he created all of us. And the, the fact that there are so many cultures in the world, and, and they're also dynamic as well, too. But God has a heart for every single person on the planet, wherever they come from, whatever their background is. And, uh, you know, one human person cannot understand all of those things and the complexities of that. But God can. And God made a way through Jesus Christ to be able to to share that. I mean, he wants the gospel to be shared. And that's our, our role. And in order to be able to do that, we've got to understand a little bit more about the person who hasn't heard the good news or who might need to be discipled in that. And so having content that's available in a relevant way, in, in an impactful way, I think is a way to encourage others. It's a way to create opportunities for evangelism through conversations about that particular issue uh, that they might be struggling with. Like for instance, uh, in creation care, many of the most unreached people groups uh, around the world today are living in the place that are most impacted by issues of uh, pollution and water shortages, food shortages, and things like that that are directly related to creation care. And as Christians, if we want to be able to share the gospel with them, we got to be able to feed them and before they can even hear the gospel um, because they they're, they're, they have other needs that are kind of putting that kind of thing out of the way. And so sharing the gospel and, and these issues really are about global evangelization and the Lausanne movement, really the focus of the upcoming uh, conference in Korea in September is about accelerating global mission. I mean, we have this whole world out here. We've got all this technology and all these resources and the global church is really growing, but we need to accelerate that. And Matthew 24 talks about, you know, has and the gospel of this kingdom will be preached to all nations and then the end will come. So our task is to share the gospel to all nations and to be engaged in that and creating excellent content and empowering Christians and, and helping people to be more effective and impactful where they are in their context and around the world is what will really help to accelerate the proclamation of the gospel. And uh, hopefully Jesus will come back soon because of mm -hmm. that. Well, that's a great, that's a great, um, it's a great way to conclude our time together. So you sort of turn this into a missions conference and a mission appeal. Um, I wonder if you might just say something from your own experience, uh, not only uh, in, individually as a person, but also as you've witnessed people who get engaged in the Great Commission. I, I think about Jonah 4. You know, God sent Jonah out, and Jonah was a reluctant missionary, but he eventually was a successful one. But then God really got a hold of his heart in the last chapter of Jonah. And I wonder if you might say anything about what, um, what getting involved in the global church as a global Christian, if, if, you're, if our identity becomes more global and our heart becomes more global, do you have anything to say to people about what to expect God to do inside of us and not just through us? When you take risks, when you experience change for the sake of the gospel, when you when you when you go to a new place or you meet another person of another culture or when you try to learn another language or when you just try to learn to see something from somebody else's point of view, uh, God does something in you. And when when you're willing to step across a boundary and and share the love of jesus um that does something for that other person because of the holy spirit's at work but it also does something in you it, it, it changes you and my wife and i always say that you know right now because of living 20 years in the philippines you know we're we 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 see the world through a lot of times through filipino eyes in many respects and the the experiences that we had and the people that we met that we're still in contact with not only in the philippines but now all around the world that makes us a better person. It makes me a better Christian. It makes me love the Lord more because we see these people who, who we come face to face with in their realities, and we just love them. Uh, one, I'll just share one thing. I have a, my editor for the Global Classroom lives in Pakistan. I've only met him one time, but he's a persecuted believer, and he, he and his family are doing their best to serve the Lord in a very, very, very difficult context. And knowing him and, and meeting him and, and just being able to pray for him and, and to, to work together with him is one of the greatest, greatest experiences I've had in my life, um, even with the Philippines there. But it, it's just really amazing. And when, when you say yes to God, God brings people in to, across your path. God teaches you new things. And when you open yourself up to him, I mean, you'll never regret it. It's the greatest uh, uh, journey uh, you have great experiences and uh, it's sometimes it's a challenge for sure, mm. but you never really 
um, waste anything that God does. And he does things in you that you never thought possible. Yeah. Well, it's always refreshing to hear uh, different people reflect on that because it seems like when God puts you on mission, uh, he's also on mission inside of us. The, the other thing that I it, it strikes me is that we often start our uh, engagement in the world with uh, using us and them. It, it's sort of like, what is it that we do for others? And there comes a point when we kind of transition into a single we. There's just one global church and we're all reaching out to each other across these lines. We're all teaching each other. We're all learning. We all have different resources and assets. We also have different liabilities and shortcomings and I think part of what you're inviting people into is is sort of that Revelation 7 uh, picture that we're all supposed to be moving toward when every tribe, tongue, language, and nation is together and it's sort of one choir. And I sense that that's also one of the outcomes of us on this journey with you. And um, I look forward to having uh, feedback from students on the course and uh, having more conversations with you. Thanks for doing this. I, I know a lot of times you've been a one-man shop You've done the video recording, the video editing, you've done the interviewing, you've done the write-ups, and um, I just want to encourage you for all the work you've done and, and uh, trust that we'll have tens of thousands of students that will benefit from it. Thank you. Well, I hope, too. thanks for the time, Tim, and I, I just hope that uh, the Global Classroom and the ODBU courses will be something that people can use to make a difference in the world for Christ, um, but it'll also do something within them. It'll encourage and strengthen them to be stronger in the Lord, and uh, they'll sense God really working and moving, and they'll be able to join him where he's working all around the world and bringing people to himself. Yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you for your time, Brent. All right. Thank you, Tim. Great to see you today. Thanks.